Hi, I'm Larry Cordell with AVI. Today I'm going to give you a tech tip on diagnosing two and three wire sensors. This should simplify the process for you a little bit and make it easier for you to diagnose them in a timely manner. The manufacturers generally have you check each individual wire, but I'm going to show you a way that you might be able to do it a little more quickly than that. So let's start with a two wire sensor. We're going to be using a throttle position sensor for both tests because it applies on a two wire sensor. You simply have the power and ground. The ground being the signal that goes back to the computer on a three wire sensor. It's a potentiometer. So you have power, ground and a separate signal wire. So let's start with a two wire sensor. If there are only two wires to the sensor, we're going to be looking for the power and ground on this one. I have three wire colors here. I have a gray, a brown, and a light blue. The gray and the brown are the power and ground. So we'll start with them as though this were a two wire sensor. If this were a two wire sensor, all I would have to do is check, my, check with my meter across those two wires. I have 4.8 volts. It's a five volt source. So I have full voltage available to the sensor. Chances are, if I've got a problem in this case, my problem is going to be the sensor. It's a very low current circuit. So even a little bit of resistance shouldn't interrupt the signal that much. If it does, it's going to skew it. It's probably not going to cause a fault that actually turns on the check engine light. So what happens if I don't have my five volts present when I check across those two wires? Well, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to leave my positive lead hooked up and I'm going to go find a good ground. Why a ground first? Because everything that's metal on the car is ground. They're generally a lot easier to find than a power source. So if I go, if I didn't have my five volts present and I go to a good ground and I find my five volts, then I know that my problem is in my ground wire or my ground circuit. This should kind of make it a little bit easier for you. If you got power and ground to your sensor, you probably got a bad sensor. If you don't have power and ground to your sensor, go to a good ground, see if your power is there. If it is, you've got a bad ground circuit. If it's not, you've got a bad power circuit. Now, what happens if I've got a three wire sensor? There's a third wire there, it's a signal wire. It's basically a potentiometer in most cases, which is a sliding resistor. So once I'm gonna start the same way, I'm gonna start by checking my power and ground, make sure I have uh, the voltage available to me to be able to, for the sensor to manipulate and send back to the computer. So once again, power and ground, got 4.98 volts on a five volt signal, on a five volt sensor. That should be sufficient. Now, I've got my scan tool here because I need to know if the signal wire is good. This one's interesting because it shows two throttle position sensors, but there's only actually one on the vehicle. It shows one went to zero with an unplugged, the other went to five volts with an unplugged. Don't know which one's the real one. But in order to check the sensor wire, I'm going to give it the opposite of what it's showing me. So if it's showing me five volts, I'm gonna short from the sensor wire or signal wire to ground. If I do that and it changes on my scan tool, I know that my sensor wire is good and that my can, computer can interpret the signal that it's getting. Once again, if all those conditions are met, I've got a bad sensor. If I don't have my five volts, I'm gonna to go to a good ground. If I get my five volts, my problem's in my ground circuit. If I don't, my problem's in my power circuit. If I have a good power and ground, the next step is shorting across these two wires to the signal. So I'm gonna say that throttle position sensor two is probably my good one and try it first, the one that's actually there. I'm gonna take a little wire, I'm just gonna short from one terminal to another, and all I'm doing here is shorten from power, five volts, to the signal wire. It doesn't look like anything changed. If you can see the scan tool, it doesn't look like anything changed at all. So 
Now let's move it and check it from the ground wire to the signal wire. Because right now the indication is I could have a bad signal wire. Notice I now have zero volts on throttle position sensor two where I had five. So throttle position sensor two is the one that's actually active. Throttle position sensor one is calculated. But shorting it and making it go from five volts to zero volts showed me that the wire is intact from the sensor to the computer and that the computer has the ability to interpret the signal that it's getting. So I just confirmed all three wires on a three wire sensor simply by unplugging it at the sensor instead of having to check resistance to ground, resistance across the wires, or any additional test. It's a nice, fast way to diagnose two wire and three wire sensors. This has been a tech tip. Again, I'm Larry Cardell with AVI. Thank you for watching.